Amen. We thank you for your giving. We thank Sister Anitra for leading us in that and doing the prayer. We appreciate her for what she's doing. We also appreciate all of you, those of you here, as well as those of you online. Let us transition right into the Word of God for this morning. We're going to pray one more time. So just bow our heads one more time. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this preaching moment. God, we ask that you would illuminate the ears of your listeners as well as the heart and the voice and the thoughts of your speaker, God. Let this be a moment where we have revelation knowledge that flows freely, unhindered, unchecked, and uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic forces. God, let your people be eternally touched and blessed. Let no one's coming or tuning in be in vain. Let somebody get something that will carry them on this week. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And let the people say, Amen. Amen. Come on with your Bibles in your hand. Or however you connect to the Word of God, just repeat after me and say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I will have what it says I will have. I'm a part of Deliverance Temple where we love by living our vision every day. What do we do? We connect with our creator continually. We confess our deliverance consistently. We commit to serve creatively. We communicate Christ's love compassionately. Father God, feed me your word. Come on, put your hands together this morning. Amen. So today, um, our title for today is a simple thing and something that I've been thinking about. Actually, it just it just kind of came to me, and it's something I've been thinking about. We we often talk about forgiveness from the standpoint of how we have to work to forgive other people, and. We all know that that can be a little difficult. It could be a little harsh. And some of y'all have been thinking about it because Christmas is rolling around and you're thinking, I ain't getting them nothing because I'm mad at them. I don't feel like it. But sometimes we forget the larger picture of the simple fact, and here it is, would you bring it up for me, that forgiven. Not just you forgiving others, but don't forget that you are forgiven. And sometimes the hardest person to forgive is going to be yourself. So this is not a beat you up message. This is a message to put a smile on your face to remind you of what God has done for you. He has forgiven all of us. Now, different people may feel different ways about that, but as we go through it, we'll understand how important it is to know and remember that you're forgiven. Somebody just say this. Say, I am forgiven. It's something we have to remind ourselves of, but let, let's, let's track through this this morning. And hopefully I can bring it home the way I believe God wants us to. Let's look at Luke 7, 36. Mother Mitchell's going to read it. This is from the New Living Translation. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. This is nothing special, but one of the, one of the church folk wanted to invite Jesus to come and sup and dine with him. And so that was a good thing. Jesus said yes, and Jesus came. Let's, let's look at the next verse that we have, which is verse 37. When a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, uh -oh. she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Hold on. How, how, how did an immoral woman get there? Uh, the, it was a church, church man, and Jesus is supposed to be eating. And all of a sudden, Luke tells us an immoral woman shows up. 
Now, if this was our day and age, it'd be all over Facebook. Now, how, how, how'd she get there? Let, let, let's put up my first point. Immorality can't stop proximity. Proximity is a word, it's just a fancy word for closeness. And so, the immorality of the woman didn't stop her from getting close to Jesus. This is important to understand because normally when you talk about church to people, they will say, and they say it somewhat facetiously, somewhat jokingly, but many times they believe it. I can't come to church because a lightning will strike when I show up. Because I've got so much junk in my trunk that if I get close, something's going to happen. But here, it lets us know that immorality can't stop proximity. No matter how messed up you may be, no matter how much dirt you may have in your past, you still can draw near to the master. And I'm glad because that means I don't have to be so perfect in order to get close. Now, let me give you an example. When you go to a sporting event, you can't spend $5 and sit courtside. It's a high price in order to sit courtside. Let me be honest. I've been to a lot of games, but I ain't never sat courtside. Now, I've been courtside at Burris, and I've been courtside at Westview, but that only costs a little, a little bit to get in the game. But when you're talking about professional sports, you can't get close unless you pay a high dollar. Yeah. Some people have that mentality with God that I got to be super clean if I'm going to get courtside. But God says you can come dirty, you can come messed up, you can come cussing, you can come fussing. I don't care because I just want folk that are willing to come close to me. And the problem is people can't come close and don't know it. The bigger problem is the folk who are close sometimes tell the people who aren't close, they lead them with the wrong impression that you got to clean up before you get close. But immorality can't stop proximity. All right, let's keep on going. Let's look at verse 38. Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. Now, this is, this is a little scandalous because uh, I'll see if I, I can give us a visual representation. So in their day, day and age, they, they would have been eating at the table, but there was a certain time of reclining. So Jesus more than likely would have pushed back from the table and he would have been reclining, but he wouldn't have been reclining with his feet up. It would have been more with his feet behind. So I'm putting my feet behind, and he was just chilling on, uh, actually, it, it seemed like they would have left the eating scene, and there would have been the lounging scene. So he's lounging, and here's this woman who comes up and automatically begins to grab his feet. Now, they've told us she was an immoral woman. So let me just put it to you this way. As saved as Lady Devon is, let a woman just come and start grabbing on my feet and you find out <laughs> Lady Devon going to jump. She's going to say something. <laughs> but it didn't, Jesus didn't seem to be bothered by this. He, he did, it, it didn't seem to be an issue with him. I want to go back to the verse for a section. We put the uh, verse back up. So she knelt behind him at his feet. So she didn't stand up, but she got low, and she was weeping, weeping so much that her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped him off with her hair. Well, why would she do that? Because she didn't have anything to wipe with it because that wasn't her plan. Her plan was just to get close, but as she got close, so touched her heart. I'm close, but 
something's touching me. Now I'm I'm uh, I'm acting it out, but as I'm acting it out, almost a real tears about to come out of my eyes because I'm thinking about me, the times I've messed up and just had to get close. Yeah. And sometimes when you get close and you know he could have backhanded you, but he just allows you to get close. And as he got as she got close, tears just began to come down her eyes. But she, she wasn't a man. So she didn't have to be like me where you got to hold back your tears and, and be tough. But because she was a woman, she could just let the tears flow. But as the tears flow, they did begin to get down on his feet. And there was nothing she had to wipe. And so she just took her hair and she wiped his feet. Let's go back to the verse. Same verse. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on him. Now nah, you done gone too far, lady. I was with you. I was with you for a second. But now you, 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 you just done done too much. You done gone too far. But this is what the Bible doesn't tell us. But it doesn't seem like this is the first time she's encountered Jesus. But this is the first time she's been this close. So whoever she was before, the first time she got anywhere near him, she could have just been in the crowd with his preaching, but something happened in her heart that changed her from the inside out. And there's no way she can articulate what's happened on the inside because everybody still sees the outside woman she's always been. But when she got close enough to him, that, that, that something happened. Now, she may have heard that he was going to be at this house, but something told her that if I can get close enough to him to worship him and let him know what he means to me, I'm going to take the chance if I can. She had the perfume, and she does what she does. But let's, let's go ahead and go to that next verse, verse 39. I'll let you read that, Mother Mitchell. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. Mm. So this is what this suggests to me. The person who invited Jesus didn't invite him just because he wanted his company. He invited him because he wanted to really check him out. He wanted to, in other words, he wasn't so sure about him. So under the pretense of let's have a meal together, he really was trying to mm, size him up. I don't really know about you. And now I got something against him. Because if he was a prophet, if he was so great, he would know what kind of woman this is. This ain't no regular woman. This is a sinner. And this sinner is touching all over you, kissing your feet and wiping your feet with hair. But let me come up to point number two. This is what we sometimes forget. <laughs> Sinners can touch Jesus. Now, 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 maybe sinners can't touch you, righteous folk. But Jesus proves to us, not only does immorality not stop proximity, but sinners can touch Jesus. Sinners can put their hands on him because what he understands is, I have the ability to fix what caused you to sin in the first place. See, this is what we forget, even though we are human, what we forget is a sinner didn't start off as a sinner. Now, even though we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity, that's not what I mean. What I mean for the majority of folk, when they're in kindergarten and you ask them what you want to be when you grow up, I want to be a fireman. I want to be a police officer. I want to play in the NBA. I want to play in the NFL. Nobody says, I want to be depressed when I grow up. I want to be addicted when I grow up. I want to mess up when I grow up. I want to end up in jail. Nobody says that, but life happens to all of us. Amen. 
And even though some people should have chosen different choices, here's the, the truth of the matter. People are, are where they are. And sometimes they're in what they're in. And us with our sanctified Sadiddy folk, we look at them and we say they need to stop this. They need to stop that. They should quit this and they should quit that. They should not do this and they should not do that. But what Jesus says, let them touch me. Because I know what's going on that you don't know. In other words, I know the moment it turned in their life. What, what, what do you mean, Pastor? Because I, I, I'll just give it in my own life. When, 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 I, when I did start drinking socially, I was enjoying myself. It was social. It was fun. It was, uh, to be honest, the, the really the first time I got drunk, I slept real good. Yeah. I'm like, this ain't all that bad. I know my daddy said it's not the best thing, but it ain't all that bad because I got me some good sleep. But, uh, but it was just a buzz. The next time I got man a little buzz, it was like I was floating as I was walking. I was walking on the sidewalk, but it was like I was floating. I had drank some Southern Comfort. The first time, first thing I had was Mad Dog 2020 grape. Slept like a baby. Second time I got drunk, it was Southern Comfort. I was floating. I'm like this. I look at them church folk that lied to me. This ain't all that bad. Yeah. But one day it turned on me. And now I'm doing it when I don't want to do it. And I'm not getting the same feeling. I'm chasing something that I used to have. I, I, didn't, I wasn't floating every time. I'm, I, I'm not getting what I thought I had. In other words, I got tricked into it. It, it, it. it brought me a level of peace and joy, and then it got snatched from me. But now my body is chasing it and craving it. It's not what I wanted to do, but the Bible says sin will trick you. It'll trap you. And what God says and Jesus says, I understand. We don't know what made this woman become an immoral woman, but Jesus said, I don't care what got you here, but here I am to say it's okay. Yeah. Alita Adams says, you can meet me by a trailway. You can meet me by a railway. I don't care how you get here. Just get here if you can. But church folks say, clean up. Before you come in. But Jesus says, come in and touch me. Because if you touch me, you might get something. I'm learning and I'm starting to be convinced that he's not as uptight as we are. Speaking of tight, being an immoral woman, I wonder, was her dress tight? Maybe. Maybe it was. Maybe that was all the kind of clothes that she had. So maybe she wasn't dressed like a church woman. Maybe she didn't have a big hat on. Maybe she had a mini skirt. Maybe her belly button was showing. Maybe she had tattoos all down her arm. I don't know, but Jesus says, still let her touch me. My God. All right. Let's keep on reading. Verse, verse 40. Then Jesus answered his thoughts. Wow. Simon, he said. This is powerful. Hold on. So the scripture is letting us know that Simon didn't say it out loud. He just thought it. Oh, he ain't, he ain't all that. But he didn't even say it out loud. But the Bible says Jesus answered his thoughts. Go ahead. Let's go ahead to that scripture again. Then Jesus answered his thoughts. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. Go ahead, teacher, Simon replied. I want you to remember that teacher phrase. I'm going to come back that, to that to a minute. But Simon, I mean, Jesus just simply said, Simon, I got, I got, something, to I got something to tell you. All right? And so uh, we're going to read verse 41. Then Jesus told him this story. A man loaned money to two people. 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to the other. Now, not only is Jesus allowing this sinner to touch him, but he also knows that Simon is sizing them up, checking them out, and don't really, uh, don't really, really, really want to fool with them. But instead of Jesus dogging Simon out, Jesus said, let me just tell you a story. Because 
many of us, we learn best through storytelling. So Jesus said, I'm just going to tell you a story. So he starts off telling the story. There, there, there's these two people. Let's, let, let's put it back up so I, I get it correct. There's these, there's these two uh, people, a man loaned money to two of them, 500 pieces of silver to one, 50 pieces to the other. All right, let's put up point number three. Because now we're about to give you the crux of the story. And uh, we're going to go to point number three. Sin is like a debt. So the reason why he's telling the story, because sin is like the debt. It's like a, an, a, a payment that you owe. And since we're in the Christmas season, a lot of y'all know about debt. A lot of y'all know about having things uh, uh, overextending yourself a little bit, and you owe more. And so sin is like that. In other words, man, most people, is, uh, just like sin, debt is something that you didn't plan to get in as deep as you wanted to, but there's something called compound interest. And so as long as you only pay the minimum payment, things just keep grow and they kind of just get out of hand. And you, you, you ever notice that with money and money management? You, you, you got stuff coming in, but stuff just gets out of hand real quick. And before you know it, you have some and you don't have something. You were spending, and now it's gone. Sin is like that. It gets out of hand real quick. And the thing about it, as humans, sometimes we forget when we're dealing with other people, we forget how easily sin can get out of hand. Now, when we're dealing with us, we, we, we want people to have grace and mercy on us. But when we're dealing with other people, sometimes we forget it, sin just, it kind of goes out of hand. So Jesus is just painting the picture for us. Let's go to verse 42. But neither of them could repay him. So he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debt. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? So he, he's asking Simon this question, but he said something that neither of them could pay back the debt, the 500 or the 50. And the scripture says he kindly canceled the debt for both of them. But then he asked Simon this question. Who do you think loved me more? Who do you think appreciated it more? Let's go to the next verse, verse 43. Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Hmm, Simon thought about it. He said, I guess it had to be the 500 guy because he owed the most. So I guess he would appreciate it the more. And so... Simon said, yeah, I guess it's that guy. And Jesus said, you're right. You're right, Simon. Now, now I'm going to take a little side turn and, and bring up point number four. And this is why I wanted to bring up the teacher. Uh, student loan forgiveness is not new. Um, when Joe Biden and them folk start talking about canceling student loans, that's not a new concept. Because Jesus is the master teacher. Yeah. I told you I was going to come back to the teacher. Jesus is the master teacher, and we're all the students. Hallelujah. And all of us have a debt to the teacher Amen. that we cannot pay. Amen. Because the scripture says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yeah. So it's not what you sinned in. Most of us, we, we're concerned about how you sinned. It's not so much how you sin, it's the fact that everybody has sinned in some way and they've all fallen well below what the master teacher <coughs> is expecting. <coughs> Excuse me. And because of that, it is a debt that we all owe. Now, maybe your debt may be smaller than my debt, but it's all debt. Let me, let, me, let me give you an example. If I owe the IRS 5000 and I don't pay, they can put me in jail. If you owe the IRS fifty and you don't pay, they can put you in jail. It's not the amount you owe. It's the fact that you owe and you never paid. It can, it can land you in the same consequence. And so sin can have the same consequence for all of us, but it is a master debt 
that we all know. All right. And so let's go to verse 44. I'm going to make a lot of sense in here in just a second. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, look at this woman kneeling here. All right. I'm going to stop just for a second. Remember, Simon never said it out loud. He said, if he knew who was touching him, if he's such a prophet, then Jesus answered his thoughts. And after he told him his story, he said, okay, Simon, look at this woman. Because I know you're thinking about it anyway. I know it's in your head. Come, look at this woman. All right, let's go back to the, to the verse. Look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet. But she was, has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. In other words, Simon, in your estimation, she's much lower than you are. Number one, this is your home, Simon. And you're so special. You've invited me to your home. But since you're so special, Simon, have you ever thought about the fact that you never offered to wash my feet? Now, why would he say something like that? Because you have to understand the day that they lived in, they wore sandals. And they walked everywhere that they went. And so there would be dust would be gathered on your feet. And so a good host would always make a preparation to take care of the feet of the visitor. But Simon was so interested in checking Jesus out and figuring out who he was, he forgot the basics. But here's this no good immoral woman and she hasn't forgot the basics but she didn't, she didn't even have the means to do it right she's doing it with her tears so so who's so special Simon is it you or is it this sinner girl all right let's let's read the next verse 45 you didn't greet me with a kiss but from the time I first came in she has not stopped Kissing my feet. You didn't even greet me the right way. You, you, it, this is what's interesting. So he's, he's a Pharisee. He knows about the Bible. But those who know about the Bible and know about church and the religious people, sometimes they don't even embrace Jesus. Some people, and this makes no sense, but I'm going to say it. Some people are so caught up in the Bible, they don't see Jesus. How is that possible? Well, the scripture says, Jesus told them, he said, you search the scriptures because you think that they, uh, they get you to eternal life, but they're the ones that they testify about me. They point to me, but you're so caught up in stuff, you miss me. But this woman was so broken, she saw me. So... Are you looking at people and saying they're so sinful? Oh, they're so awful. Look at how they act. Look at what they do. And Jesus is saying, but you don't even see me. You miss me thinking you're so special. That's a scary thought. Let's continue to read. Let's look at verse 46. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I, I, hold on, I like this. You neglected the courtesy. You're religious. You know the law, but you're not even courteous. Oh, let me stop and talk for a minute. You ever run into church folk that ain't even courteous? I talked about it last week. Some folk that ain't even good. They're just not even good people. Not even kind. Not even courteous. You, you ever seen church folk that won't even greet you? When they see you, hmm, just walk on by you. I, I, I may not be as saved as you. My outfit may not look as holy as you, yours, but I still have a name. I'm still a person. What makes me so low that you can look over me? They say the only time you should look down on someone is if you're helping them up. And Simon was so special. And Jesus said, you neglected to do 
the courteous thing. And here's the thing. Jesus didn't say, it wasn't like Zacchaeus. Jesus told Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house. That wasn't the case here. Simon invited him. He invited him and wasn't even courteous. There's a lot of church people that have churches and say the doors of the church are open, but they're not even courteous enough to let Jesus in. Because Jesus said, when you do it for the least of these, you've done it for me. So, if homeless people don't bother you at all, something might be wrong with your salvation. If a person who just can't break an addiction and is trying doesn't bother you at all, something might be wrong with your salvation. If you're so happy that everybody's going to hell, I, I, I don't understand people that shout over other folk going to hell. They just, they just, they're just going to hell. Oh, hallelujah. They're going to hell. Why, why does that make you happy? It, it ought to hurt you that people are losing out. It ought to compel you to do something. Or something must be wrong with what you have. And that's what Jesus was pointing out to Simon. Simon, something's wrong here. He's going to explain to us later what's wrong, but we'll, we'll dig into it. Let's go to the next verse. I think verse 47, yeah. I tell you, her sins, and they are many. Now hold on. It wasn't that he didn't recognize, and Jesus was honest. He didn't, he didn't miss words. Yes, her sins are many. Let's continue to read. We're going to go, finish the whole verse, go back. I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love, but a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. Ooh. So he, he, he said, here's the key to the kingdom, Simon. Let me, let me tell you something. Yeah, she's a mess. She's been a mess, but she's been forgiven. And those who've been forgiven, this is what King J said, those who've been forgiven much love much. The problem with a lot of church people, they ain't never been through nothing. And so they haven't been forgiven from a lot. So they don't really know how to love. It's really, really hard for them to love a girl who aborted a child. They'll stand and hold their sign, abortion is wrong. Because they've never been in a situation where they had to choose. This, let, let, let me dig a little deeper. It, it, a lot of times it happens when people who are privileged, who have things, who have money and stuff, sometimes they don't know what it's like to live in the gutter and pull yourself up from the bootstrap and you sometimes make choices that you don't want to make. And, 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 and there are uh, people in government positions that look down on folk that have skin color like we do, but flip the situation. Let their people have come over on slave ships and had to go through cotton fields and, and go through the civil rights movement and, and barely have anything. They, they, they would have a different level of compassion, but a lot of people who've never been through anything, they just don't know how to love. Well, here at Deliverance Simple, we call ourselves a church of love. That's why we go through so much hell. Because, now point number five, they already give us a preview of it, bring it up, point number five. And here's the reason why. Because broken people make the best healers. When you've been through it, you've been in it, you've been under it. You've almost succumbed to it. You've unfolded in it. You, you, you know what it's like to be the one cheated on and to be the cheater. You, you know what it's like to be the thief. 
You know what it's like to be the one to go off. You, you know what it's like to not be able to lift your head from the pillow because you've been so depressed. You, you know what it's like to have social anxiety and be confused. But all you know is one day God began to work in your life and he began to turn things around in your life. And so when the next person goes through, you don't get so high and mighty because you see that you see you in them. Ah, I see myself in them. I see myself when they're failing. failing. So what I do, I just try to rally around and, and grab them and hold them. And someone says, well, well Pastor, you're so, you're so nice to me. You've taken so much time with me. But they don't know somebody took time with me. So I'm just paying it forward. I'm just passing it on because you don't understand. I should not be up here. I, I should not be preaching to y'all. But, but God turned my life around. And I just hope I can tell somebody else that the same God that did it for me, he can do it for you. Yeah. Oh, but Pastor Andre, yeah, I know you talked about being drunk and all that stuff. But, but you told me that you only was in that state for 18 months. But I've been in it for 18 years, Pastor. <laughs> it don't make a difference you've been in it for 18 seconds, 18 days, 18 weeks, 18 months, 18 years, or 18 centuries. When God get ready to deliver you, he can deliver you. And so because we are deliverance temple, we have to understand that we may not reach the noble people. We may not reach the high and mighty folk. We may not reach the folk who have it all together. We might get the broken folk, but we know what to do with the broken folk because we are broken ourselves. And the broken people, they make the best healers. You know, every now and then, if you've gone through maybe a, a certain type of sickness, sometimes it's good to talk to someone who's been through that sickness. They can tell you what to do. Oh, oh, let me tell you, let me tell you what helped me get over that. Help me break that fever. I took this and I took that. And what you got to do, you got to heat it up. And, and I, I took a little hot toddy. They'll tell you how to make a hot toddy, whether you want one or not. Because they said, I went through something and I came out of it. And I'm trying to help you. And I don't understand folk like Simon. Who don't know how to help somebody else. Amen. Once again, I'm going to tell the story, one of my favorite stories. I love it. So we, we have the two identical vases that were going to the auction house, and they were going to be sold as a pair. But on the way to the auction house, the truck got shaky. One of the vases broke and shattered. They tried to put it back together and piece it back together and glue it back together because they wanted to sell it to, as a pair but now the broken one was just too ugly next to the perfect beautiful vase so they separated them and they sold one vase and put it up front and put the other vase in the back because nobody's going to want it but somebody messed around and put a candle inside the broken vase and every place where it was glued together and it looked ugly, the light shined through. And all the people in the auction kept walking back to the ugly vase. Because it was no longer ugly, it ended up being more beautiful. Because every place it was broken, the light was shining through. And that vase went more, went for more than anything else. Because all they realized is all you got to do is drop light inside of it. And it is beautiful. And I'm here to tell you the perfect folk that's never been cracked, that's never been dropped, that's never had to be like Humpty Dumpty and glued back together. When the light gets inside of them, nobody knows. But baby, the broken folk, the messed up folk, the molested folk, the drunk folk, the lying folk, the evil folk, when the light gets inside of them, somehow the light shines forth. And they're the ones that everybody gravitates to. And you wonder, why are all these people flocking to me? It's because you've been broken, but the light is shining through. And you're more valuable than you ever knew because you're broken. 
one, one, one version of this in, in the other gospel says, wherever the gospel is told, the story of this lady will be told. She was the immoral one. But now, centuries later, she's the one that they keep preaching about. And the only time they bring up Simon is to point how messed up he was. So do you want to be like Simon? Or do you want to be like the broken girl? All right. Let's look at verses 48 to 50. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. Hold on. Didn't he just say that, uh, you, can, you, you, can, you can go back. Didn't he just say that her sins were many? Like a, a lot? That means a whole bunch. And with one word, he said, your sins are forgiven. Done. You, you mean no matter how many sins I have, God can speak one word and forgive all of them? With just one word. one word. Oh, my God. With just one word, one God word. can forgive my sins. So, instead of me walking around town like this, oh, God, I've done so much wrong. I can start walking around town like this. <laughs> yeah, I've done so much wrong, but God found me one day and put his hand on me and forgave me and is forgiving. Because as we are growing, we sometimes keep making mistakes. I'm not talking about we're, we're just purposely doing a whole bunch of evil, but, but sometimes we, we miss the mark. Sin actually means missing the mark. So sometimes you actually miss the mark even when you're trying. Sometimes we got Christian folk who are trying and you still fall short. I, I, listen, I, I didn't plan on cussing nobody out today. But I ended up cussing somebody out, and I'm saved. But something happened. Something was in me, and God still forgave. Now, Sister Trish said, I did that, but there's a lot of y'all who could chime in and say, we did that too. But I throw that out there because that's funny, but there's some stuff that we don't tell nobody about. That's done happened in our life, and it wasn't that we planned on doing it. But God is so good. He'll say, did you learn the lesson? Well, I learned the lesson. Okay, I forgave you. You mean it's that easy? And let me tell you something. I still struggle with even as a pastor. I, I feel like it's supposed to be harder than that. Maybe I'm supposed to read a hundred scriptures to, to, oh, God, I know I, I messed up and I know I thought wrong. Let me, let me get in the Bible. Let me read. Nothing wrong with reading the Bible, but God don't need that to forgive you because he forgives you based on him. He don't forgive you based on you. Now, now other people, humans, we forgive each other based on each other. In other words, if you act right, I might let you back in my life. But God says whether you act right or not, I'll still let you touch me because I'm big and I'm bad enough. If you stay close to me, whatever you're messing up with in, it won't stay too long because I'm bigger than whatever you're going through. Hallelujah. My God. Bigger than whatever you go. All right, let's, let, let's go ahead and, and, and go back to that. He said your sins are forgiven. All right, let's... Let's go back to the verse. The men at the table said among themselves, who is this man that he goes around forgiving sins? Now, this shows you how sedity they were. Now, now let, 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 let's just be honest. Now, these, there is, it didn't tell us all, first of all, it just talks about Jesus and Simon. It didn't tell us about the other men at the table. We don't know anything about them. But I know all I need to know. They were men. So whether they had been with this woman or not, they didn't, it didn't cross their mind. Because she wasn't a Nemora woman because she was ugly. She probably looked apart, dressed apart. And men, 
I'm in. And sitting at that table, whether it happened that day or before, they had some thoughts, whether it was about that woman or other woman. They had some thoughts, thoughts crossed their mind. And instead of saying, oh, God, I'm glad you can forgive my thoughts, they got what they said. He says, who does he think he is? Forgiving sins. In other words, what they should have said, if you forgiven sins, let me get in line. I, I got some stuff I need forgiven too. <laughs> but Sadiddy folk act like they ain't never done nothing. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Let me be honest. God, if you handing out forgiveness, let me get some. Because I can go all the way to my young age and see what I did some dumb stuff. I'm not, I'm not going to stay here too long, but let me tell you some dumb stuff I've done. Not because I'm just an evil person, but because I'm human. Hallelujah. And sometimes when you're human, you're just dumb. Yeah. I'm going to go all the way back to, I think it was kindergarten. I got in trouble at the Christian school in kindergarten. What was you doing, Pastor Andre? I am ashamed to tell you, but I'm glad I'm forgiven. When we was at nap and the teacher was walking around, they caught me looking up under the teacher's dress. <laughs> little, little fella got curious, and at the Christian school, I got in trouble. I had to go to the office, and they had to tell Pastor Daddy, my, my daddy the pastor, what I was doing. Just young and dumb. A lot of y'all have done some young and dumb stuff, too. But how did I know to do something? Even though I was young, I knew it was wrong. How did I know to try it and do it? It's just something in our human nature that ain't right. And we'll try stuff. And we'll do stuff. Now, I was young so, that, so they could kind of wink their eye at me and fix me and, and redirect me. But we done got older and done some dumb stuff. And so why do folk come in church? And act like they got it all together. I'm so glad God is handing out see, uh, forgiveness of sins. See, some of y'all are happy about Black Friday because they have buy one, get one free. But I'm happy about Good Friday because one man went to the cross and I got my sins taken care of for free. I got another buy one, get one. When he died, I got taken care of for free. I'm so grateful. And so when the next person, when the next immoral person is messing up, I'm not the one. To be like, Ooh, who they think they are? I'm the one to say, God, I'm so grateful that you're saving all of us. Yeah. And you're helping all of us. All right, let's, let's continue to read. We're about, almost done. Verse, verse 50. And Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Wow. No, 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 wait a second. She... She did, she did worship and do all, all that she did, but God added something extra. He said, go in peace. Yeah. She, she came messed up, and not only did she get forgiveness, she got peace too. Amen. God is one of those people that says, have, let, 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 me, let me talk to you like, like y'all would understand. Uh, you, you, you ever got hooked up in the drive through line? You ordered three tenders, and you looked, there was five of them in there. Look at God. Got the hook up. Now, when I was young, we used to know what line to get in to get the hook up. There was this one girl. She was kind of sweet on me. I wasn't sweet on her. But I knew if I got in her line, I'd get the hook up. Well, God is so sweet on you even when you're not sweet on him, that he'll give you the hookup. He'll give you the extra. You, you, he'll go, the Bible says this way, he'll do exceeding, abundantly, above all that you ask or think, according to the power that works in us, because he knows how to hook his people up. And those online, you won't be able to see this. Oh, actually, the will, will go ahead and zoom all the way out. Uh, go, go ahead and uh, take it to like uh, number five. Uh, uh, yeah. So, 
I didn't paint the picture too well, but as he was reclining at the table, that means the lady had to get down by his feet. So you may have to crawl to Jesus. You may have to cry at his feet. You may have to weep beside, by his side. Not because of what others have done, but because of what you have done. But when you rise up, he says, I'll give you peace. Yeah. <laughs> you might come crying, but you'll leave with peace. You might come broken, but you'll leave with wholeness. You might come confused, but you'll leave with a blessing. I don't care how you come. If you get close to him, he'll remind you that you are forgiven. Last point. And this is how we'll close. Let me tell you this, this some of this, for some of y'all, this is the greatest Christmas gift you can ever get to know that you're forgiven. The gospel is God offers free forgiveness and only asks you for faith. Here, here's the, the thing. Now, well, I want you to go backwards to the very last verse and then verse 50. And we'll close this. And Jesus said to the woman, he, he said, your faith has saved you. Now, we know the truth. Jesus did all the work. But Jesus is so good, he gives us credit and says, all you got to do is believe. Yeah. And you get all the benefits. It's like when I was in school, we would have tests, and we would struggle, and then one time the teacher would say, today is an open book test. Uh -huh. Open book test means I get all the answers. Uh -huh. All I got to do is find them, but they're all right there. I don't have to work that hard. I don't have to study that much. All I got to do is find the answers that are already there. And Jesus said, I got it all laid out for you. I'm going to do all the work. And all I need is a little bit of your faith. And can you give a little faith to get free forgiveness? Well, yes, I can. I feel like Obama. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. We're going to pray a prayer of repentance together and just by faith reach out to the Lord. Dear gracious Heavenly Father God, we are forgiven because of you. And there may be some other folk around us who haven't been through much and so they don't know how to love much. They haven't been broken, so the light doesn't shine as much. But we know what it's like to be broken. We know what it's like to be on the bottom of the barrel. We know what it's like to struggle. But we're not going to stay in that place. We're just going to use that little mustard seed faith to say that if you want to forgive me and forgive us, I'm willing to accept it by faith. So by faith, I declare I'm saved. By faith, I declare I'm forgiven. By faith, I declare I'm a child of God. By faith, I declare I'm a son of God. By faith, I declare I'm a daughter of God. By faith, I declare I'm in the kingdom. And if anybody under the sound of my voice here or online, all you need is faith to believe in the master. He didn't just come to be born in a manger, but he came, like John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And that sin includes my sin and your sin. And for that, we can declare we are forgiven in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Come on. If you feel like you're forgiven, just praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Well, God bless you all. If you need prayer for a specific thing, you can come and we lay hands on you. If you feel like you have to take an extra step and give your life to the Lord in a, in a way of coming down the aisle and being prayed for, we can do that as well. But if you prayed that prayer and you really believe, you are forgiven. But God bless you. Uh, there we go. God bless you. Have a great week. We love you. Online, you are dismissed.